This Focus on Health segment is brought to you by Aurora Healthcare. Hello and welcome to Focus on Health. I'm Ted Stefaniak. You know, on a beautiful day like this, most people aren't thinking about bee stings, but for many, it's a very serious threat. So today we're gonna to be speaking with allergist and immunologist, Dr. Anita geller Ragoni, and we're gonna find out just what the risk factors of bee stings really are. Well, thank you for joining us once again. You know, we have such a beautiful day out here, but some people have uh, have the issue of dealing with bee stings and people are allergic to bee stings. If, if you're allergic to bees and you get stung, how do you typically treat something like that? Well, about 10 million Americans or so are allergic to bee stings, so that's about 5% of people. And there's no way to really predict if you're gonna be allergic. Uh, the way we treat it, though, is with a device called epinephrine. And um, what this is, is it comes in a case and it's an auto injector type device and it comes in two pens. And there's trainers that come with the kits which are instructed and I always teach that in the office too. Um, the way we, we determine if somebody needs one of these is based on the reaction they have. So there's different kinds of reactions. Some people have just what we call large local reactions, meaning just a big red area. And that does not indicate the need for epinephrine, actually, and that doesn't predict that you're gonna ever have a severe reaction to a bee sting. Um, the reactions that require treatment or evaluation are those that we call anaphylaxis. And those reactions can vary, and they include uh, lightheadedness, um, wheezing, coughing, throat closing, eyes swelling, stomach aches. So lots of different reactions. They can break out in hives. Um, so those are all considered severe reactions that require this treatment. Yeah. When, you, when you use the uh, epinephrine pen, it, does that pretty much take care of it or does a person then have to also get to see their doctor right away? That's a good question. So when they use the pen, um, first thing is they should have two pens all the time. And the reason for that is some people require a second injection. About 20%, so out of five reactions, one will need an additional pen. So yes, they should see an, their doctor right away after they use the first one. They should, usually we tell people to call 911. Um, I have some individuals that live very close. They can get here closer and have a friend that drives them but either way, they should be seen immediately after using the device. Yeah. Now, is there a way to test to see if you're actually allergic to bees? Yes, there is. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. Um, what we use in our clinic is, is a device that's considered to be the least painful, which is why I chose it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And it's, you're welcome. <laughs> Very small. Um, you can hardly even see the All tip right, on it. Right. And we use this first, we call this a scratch test. And then um, whatever is positive is what you would end up being um, considering treatment for. Now, um, there is a second step of testing after this, and that's where we have very small needles that we inject a small amount under the skin. And what we're looking for is a small hive or itchy spot that tells us you're allergic to that insect that we're testing to. Okay, now when a person comes in to be tested for whatever allergies they might be trying to figure out, is the bee test also just part of that or do they have to ask for that specifically? They have to ask for that to specifically. And we would only test for that if they had a reaction. Um, I'll often have people come in and as part of the testing that I do for trees and grasses and all of that, they'll say, well, can you test me for bee stings? Um, the problem is that if I test, it doesn't predict what your reaction will be. So even if you had a positive test, it doesn't mean you're gonna go out and have anaphylaxis to a bee. So we, we test people who have already had a reaction, and those are the individuals we test for right. bee stings. And when you say reaction, I mean, is it a severe reaction, or are there variations of, of you know, the severity of, of the reaction? There are variations of the severity. Um, any reaction that involves the throat, the lungs, or any breathing problems, or if they lose consciousness, pass out, um, those people for sure should be tested. Um, any adult who breaks out in hives head to toe, and it can vary, but we can't predict what the reaction will be. And if you have one reaction on one event, it doesn't predict what your future reaction will be. But we do know that as much as 60 to 70% of people who have a reaction will have a similar 
reaction the next time, at least as severe. Right. Now, does family history play anything in, you know, a part in possibly being allergic to bees? That's another good question. <laughs> so it does um, in the sense that having a family history of a bee sting increases your risk of being allergic to anything. So anybody who has a parent that was allergic means they are at higher risk to just be allergic. It doesn't predict what you'll be allergic to. Um, for example, if a parent comes in and they're very severely allergic and they want to know if their child is allergic, I tell them their child is at no greater risk than the next person of being allergic to bees. They're just more likely to be allergic in general. Right. Now, if you're allergic to bee stings, are there other possible insects you might be allergic to? Yes. Um, we kind of categorize it all as bees because it's hard to differentiate. Uh, if you look at the different um, insects online, or you can Google everything now, and you can look at images, and there's textbooks and, um, that show you the different images, they look very similar. They're almost all yellow and black. And so we can, we can test to all of them, and I test to all, regardless of what somebody tells me they thought they were stung by, because usually we're wrong. And there are bees, which is the honeybee. And in this neck of the woods, it's just the honeybee. There's the Africanized honeybee, which is more aggressive, found in southern states. Um, and then there's wasps, the paper wasp, uh, yellow jacket, um, and then the hornet. And there's also the, both the yellow-faced hornet and the white-faced hornet. Now, if a person is stung, and you mentioned some of the symptoms that you might experience if you're allergic, how important is it to get to a doctor or an emergency room? What, what would you recommend? Yes, if they have a severe reaction, they should be seen immediately. Um, they should not wait because those symptoms can progress. And they should, be, uh, they should seek attention to receive uh, evaluation, testing, and they should be taught on how to use an EpiPen or epinephrine. The problem is that um, these, even though they're made to be simple to use, um, more than half of people who have one use it wrong. And so it's important to be taught and it's important to know when to utilize it. Most people don't use it when they should have used it because they're afraid of it. Right. And it really is a life-saving device. Right. And uh, that's why it's so important to, to get to see you, make sure that uh, you're not allergic to bee stings, and then also how to use the pen correctly. Yes. And then there's the testing. And then once we do the testing, we offer a treatment for them besides epinephrine. Um, in, in reality, the, most people don't carry their epinephrine with them. Um, when you're outdoors mowing your lawn, unless you're going to wear a fanny pack, I don't know how you're going <laughs> to yeah, right. carry it. Um, and that is where the, uh, the immunotherapy or allergy shots for bee stings come in. And we offer those also, and it's recommended that people receive those if they've had a life-threatening reaction. Um, it's 97% protective. Within three months of starting, you'll be 90% protected. So if somebody comes to me during this time of the year, in the summer, I try to get them started right away, and then we get them on a regimen and they'll be ready to go by fall, so that if they're stung, they don't have to worry. Yeah. Yeah. Try to avoid getting stuck. I guess that's, yes. that's the big issue, but uh, if you have that, you can certainly uh, see you for, for any questions. Mm -hmm. That is correct. All right, well, thanks for joining us today. Sure, thank you. Now, if you have any questions about bee stings or even seasonal allergies, you can certainly get a hold of Dr. Geller Ragoni by checking out our website at aurora.org, or you can certainly give us a call at 920-303-8700. I'm Ted Stefaniak, and we'll see you next time on Focus on Health. This Focus on Health segment has been brought to you by Aurora Healthcare.